This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Y'all still quiet. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Y'all still quiet. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You're still quiet. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Anybody know that we serve a good God? If it had not been for the grace of God, if it had not been for the mercy of God, we probably would have went crazy. But I double dog dare you to look at your neighbor right where you are. Even if you in your living room at the kitchen table, you ought to look at somebody and tell somebody, thank you, Jesus. To all who are watching, we welcome you to the Greater Love Baptist Church Hour, where we love God and we love the people of God. Where our pastor is the proud pastor Isaac Grant Jr. and our first lady is Minister Constance Grant Jr. Greetings to all. Our scripture will be coming from Psalms 100 and its entirety. Make a joyful noise. Unto the Lord, all ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing, knowing that the Lord, that he is God, and he that made us and not we ourselves. We are the, his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. Verse 5, and I ought to have some agreements in verse 5. For the Lord is good. Oh, y'all still quiet. Verse 5 said, for the Lord is good. I wish I had some help right here. For the Lord is good. And his mercy and truth endures to all generations. The grass wither than the flower fading, but the word of our God shall remain the same. While Brother John coming to pray, I know the dog down somebody to just stand to your feet and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father God, we thank you for blessing us to be here this morning, Father, because you didn't have to do it today, Lord. Father God, I thank you for blessing me, Father, to be here today. Father God, your, your word, standing on your word, standing on your beliefs, Father God, that you provided miracles for me today, Lord Jesus. Father God, I thank you for blessing each and every one of these saints to be out here today, Lord. They didn't have to be here today, Lord. You didn't have to let any of us to be here today, Lord, but we thank you, Lord. So, Lord Jesus, we ask you for blessing of the sick and afflicted today, Lord Jesus, that are unable to go to the doctors today, Lord Jesus, that are restricted from going to the doctors, Lord. We ask you to just watch over those ailments, Lord Jesus, to heal those ailments, Lord, when we have no one else to depend on but you today, Lord, because you're the healer today, Lord Jesus. You're the doctor today, Lord Jesus, so we thank you, Lord. Father God, we ask you to bless this day, Lord. Send your word today, Lord Jesus. Send us a word, Lord Jesus, from you. Father God, we ask you to just Touch the past of the day, Lord Jesus. Yes. Every word that comes out of his mouth that, Lord Jesus, we have understanding and hearing today, Lord yes. Jesus. Yes. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that you're going to do for us the rest of this week. Lord Jesus, provide miracles yes. each and every day, Father God. Transportation miracles, healing miracles, Father God. I thank you for blessing each and every one of us that's a body to be here today, Lord. And those that couldn't be here today that's seeing us on Facebook, that's hearing us on the audio. Father God, we ask you to just reach out and touch each and every one of them. Father God, we thank you for all these blessings in Jesus' name. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. It's worthy. At this time, we're going to have our tithes and offering. Uh, this give you opportunity to give to the Lord God for his goodness, his mercy endure forever. God is good. And we need to bless. 
this church by giving our tithes and offering. God only asks in 10%, which means 10 cents out of every dollar. That's all it is. He said, you can keep 90 cents. Just give me that 10 cents. Everything belongs to God anyway. He a merciful God. He allowed us to keep more than we give it to him. So it's a blessing to be able to give this morning. So just give and God will bless you. As the earth should come around, just give. God is a good God. Jesus.
name Jesus. The Bible said, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. I don't care what your position is. I don't care what your title is. In the last days, every knee got to bow and every tongue shall confess.
coming every Sunday morning and doing what you do. We are certainly grateful to God for that. We want to thank everyone here today and thank all of you for tuning in. I just wanted to say that God is such a good God. Uh, every time uh, I seem to get a little bit in the stage of weariness. And I say that because, uh, you know, the CDD or the CDC, mm -hmm. uh, they were saying that we were on the verge and we'll probably get there going back to stage five. And uh, when I got a call from a fellow partner, a pastor in ministry with me, he called me and he said, well, Grand Day, they just made a decision from the Supreme Court that uh, we can have our house of worship and it's on you how many people that can attend. And he says to me that I'm going to have my same crew because right. we've been wiping down and we've been doing everything that they said to do. And so that gave me my go ahead. I said, well, that's cool. That's really cool. But God has always been good to me here. Because every time I get concerned, I won't say word because we don't suppose a word. I get concerned that God always have the numbers in the right place. And so for that, I, I, I just say thank you, Jesus. I really do. I I say thank you, Jesus, for uh, how you do things. Because a lot of times we get in his way. And, and, and when you get in his way, you, you're saying to him, you don't know what you're doing. But you got to understand as we grow into this, understand this, God knows what he's doing. It ain't no joke. He knows what he's doing. And on this day, we normally come to you with a Christmas message and... We're living in a different time now. This is a different time, man. And people really, people really need to hear the word of God uh, because folks are hurting. Folks are, folks are hurting and not only out there, but folks in here. And when I say in here, I mean in the Christian dome. Uh, folks are hurting. And I decided this morning I want to talk about something this morning and I hope we can get an understanding of uh, how, how God yeah. can take something that looks so bad to mankind oh, yeah. but in the sight of God it's good. Amen. And sometimes that's hard for us to believe that God can do that. Uh, let us pray. Father, we come now. We come in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for things being as well as it is. It could have been worse, God. But we thank you for right now. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day. And we're not supposed to know. We're not supposed to worry. But we thank you for right now. For what you've done in our lives at this hour. We give your name the glory. We give your name the praise. Because we know that you are worthy to be praised. Now God we come to decrease in order that you might increase. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles I want us to go to the, the Luke chapter 17. I, I want to I, I wanna talk about these lepers this morning. Uh, in Luke chapter 17, we're going to begin our reading at verse 11. Luke chapter 17, beginning at verse 11. And if you're not there, catch me. All right. And it says, and it came to pass. As he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria yeah. and Galilee. 
And he entered into a certain village. There met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourself unto the priests. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice, glorified God. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, says this stranger. And in verse 19, he said unto them, Arise and go thy way. Yeah. Thy faith, listen what he said, thy faith has made thee whole. Yeah. And I want to talk to you on the subject, how to be made whole. Yeah. How to be made whole. Listen, we are living in a day and time where people really are hurting and then sometimes we get accolades and we get things that we hear through uh, the radio wave and we hear it through television. And, and we, think, we think that in the church that somebody can just walk up to you, Nathan, and say, be made whole and you're going to be made whole. But I come to tell you this morning that there is a process to go through before you can be made whole. Help me here, somebody. Because you can tell somebody, uh, uh, go and be made whole. You can say, go, you're whole. But listen, if your life ain't lined up with the word of God, I come to tell you this morning, you ain't going to be made whole. I said, there is a process that you to go through and we're in the body of Christ. We make people happy but people need to understand that there is a process that you got to go through. You ain't gonna just tell me I'm gonna be made whole and I'm going stepping out and I'm happy. Yeah, you're supposed to be but there is a process that you got to go through. Help me, help me, so, so, so let's read, let's read, let's read how Jesus healed these ten leopards and let's see what we can learn. Listen, listen, it said, there met him ten men that were leopards. It's in your Bible, right there in verse 12, it's in your Bible. Listen, I want to share with you the demonstration, listen, how leprosy affect them back in the days, and then you can understand what I'm getting ready to say. See, leprosy is an akin to what is today called Hansen disease. It was the most dreaded disease in the Bible time. For there was no known cure for it. It was, what's the, what, what it did? It would disfigure and destroy the body. Deformity of the hands and feet and ears and nose and lips occurred in its later stages. Hear what I'm saying. In the later stages, all of this stuff occurred. It was generally believed that only God could heal leprosy. Right. So, so when Christ healed a leper, it gave evidence of his deity. Watch me here because, because these priests didn't believe. Help me hear somebody. Yeah. That, that, that God, that God could heal. And so, and so, and so as God healed the leper, it will explain that, 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 that this is his deity. But understand the stages, I want to tell you that again. It would disfigure and destroy the body. Deformity of the hands and feet. You hear what I'm saying? 
ears and nose. Lips will occur in the later stages. So in the later stages of this disease called leprosy, your hands gonna be deformed, your nose. I want you to see where I'm going at. All of the scuff gonna be deformed. So you can see that even in the midst of this deformity, I want you to see why they didn't want leprosy around them. It was 10 men that were lepers. And one of them was a Samaritan. I want you to mark that in your Bible because that's very important. One of them was a Samaritan. The society of 10 men was composed of nine Jews and one Samaritan. And what says, and normally Jews and Samaritan had nothing to do with each other. They didn't have nothing to do with each other. Help me here. But the common misery of these lepers drew them together. See, 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 they didn't have nothing to do with each other, but all of them had the same disease. And so since all of them had the same disease, what's it? That one Samaritan, he had to join up with the rest of them because he had what they had. Good word. But can I tell you something? Associating together did not lessen the problem. Even though they came together, that didn't lessen the problem. The Bible says, help me hear somebody, oh God have mercy, Jesus. In Proverbs, watch it, Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 21. What I want to show you is, even though they came together, help me, it didn't lessen the problem, and the same is true with sinners. Yeah. Mm. Proverbs 11 and 21 says, Though hands join in hands, mm. the wicked shall not be unpunished. Mm. Oh, God have mercy. Oh. Though hands, you better hear what I'm saying, hands join together in hands, the wicked shall not be unpunished. And so sinners get together, help me hear somebody, because <laughs> they got the same disease like we had. And listen, don't put your mouth on them, come on out of here, because the same disease that they got is the same disease that we can. Come on. But Jesus called us in. And when Jesus called us in, guess what? Jesus wants you to live a life so they can see your life and they can be healed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Watch me here. The Bible says, the Bible says, they stood afar off. Because those with leprosy were separated from the rest of society. And this separation was one reason it was such a dread, a dreaded disease. Because leprosy literally broke up the families in that day. See, you got leprosy. The family. You can't go around the family. And can I can I can I talk to some married couple today? Listen to me. This thing called Corona, we in the same house, and then you don't want to touch each other. Ain't nobody talking. Ain't nobody talking. I'm telling you, this stuff could destroy your family if both and both parties are not full of the Holy Ghost and in the Word of God. Somebody gonna do something wrong because you can't touch me no more. If you cough, I'm running. I don't hear nobody. Don't touch me. If you sneeze, I'm running. Don't touch me. You better hear what I'm saying. You can be just like these lepers in the Bible and destroy your family. Can't come around. I want you to hear me this morning. Can't come around, you know. And, and, and listen, and listen. I don't, I don't fault nobody for letting that family member watch it. That family member that 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 that's not taking this serious. I don't fault you for not allowing them to not come around. Y'all ain't saying that. See, see, that family member that says, I ain't, I'm not wearing no mask, I'm not washing my hands, I'm, I'm not doing none of that. That same family member, listen, I don't fault you for not letting them come around. Because you got a family to protect. You ain't saying nothing here. You got a family to protect. And so when you say, listen, the door's closed. I'm sorry. 
Listen, this is what you need to do. Don't kill them. Mm. No, no. If they come by for some food, hear me. If they come by for some food, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you take the food, put it by the door, and let them come to pick it up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, ain't nobody talking about yeah. you. Yeah. I said, you take the food, yeah. put it by the door, uh -huh. and then you let them come and pick it up. Yeah. You don't go associating and mingling and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But let Stuff up. Can I get a witness here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh Lord, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Like the devil. Help me, Jesus. Listen, listen, you, 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 you got to, you got to get to the point where you take this serious. Amen. Mm. Right. You can't be playing with it. Right. It's not a toy. Right. If, if, if you don't believe it, yeah. look at the statistic of how many people are dying from it. That's right. And so when people die from this, help me somebody, when people die from this, we still don't take it serious, yeah. and sometimes in your household, watch me, if you take it serious, the rest of them, I, listen, 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 me, my wife, and male, thank y'all, me, my wife, male, we, we take it serious. We put the mask on when we going out. We wash our hands. Yeah. And when we come back home, we do all our little thing. But if somebody come by my house, because I got family members now, you ain't taking it serious. You coming, you ain't got no mask on. You ain't trying to wash your hand. You hanging out with the wrong crowd. You ain't coming in my house. Something you, you might think that's hard, but that's hard. Well, you, you can call it hard all you want. I'm trying to live. Ain't nobody talking. I said, I'm trying to live. And you're not taking it serious. You ain't trying. I'm trying to live. I know Jesus. I know the blood of Jesus covers me. I already know that, but I'm trying to live. And so, and so, and so if you got that kind of family member, let's put it to the door. I had to do it last night. I had to do it last night. I had to drive, I had to pick up some stuff from the store, and I had to go by the house, and I had to put the stuff at the door. Pop, 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 pop. It's at the door. Get back in my car. Get back in my car. And guess what? When I got back in my car, I made the call. Hey, your stuff is at the door. Yeah. yeah. You ain't saying that. Right. And the person came out and waved and said, man, you right. You right. Because you got to take this serious. But the lapis, what's this? It, it destroyed families back in that day. Don't worry about it. I'll get the other mic. It destroyed families back in that day. And, uh, and in that day, it destroyed families. But what's this? I feel like not the mic. I just feel like yeah, yeah, And yeah. when the lepers met Christ, yeah, they pleaded for him to heal him. Yeah, yeah. Look, look at the Bible now. When they met him, they pleaded. They, they pleaded for, for him to heal them. They lifted up their voices. They lifted up their voices in verse 13. Mm -hmm. Say with me, say with me. Don't worry about it, Nate. Don't worry about it. They lifted up their voices in verse 13. I want you to see this now. Uh -huh. First, I want you to look at the, 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 the debility of the voices. Yeah. Watch this. The voice of a person with leprosy is often greatly weakened by leprosy. All right, say it again. Come, come on out of here now. All right. I'm going to say that again. Yes, the voice, watch this here now, mm. of a person with leprosy is often weakened. It's greatly weakened by leprosy. Mm. Mm. Therefore, it was a great effort that these leopards shouted to Christ for heaven. Yeah, yeah. So hear me. Their voices were weakened. Yeah. Because of this disease. Watch this now. They go, oh, oh, oh. But watch me here now. Watch me here. The second thing was the distance, their voices, of their voices. The men stood afar off. Is it in your Bible? You know why they stood afar off? Because their restriction, because of their restriction. They had to stand afar off. So they had to lift up their voices extra loud in order to be healed over a distance. Hear me what I'm saying? Okay, I, I got this disease. My voice is going. I'm afar off. Mm -hmm. And so I got to ask 
actually, I got to really lift up my voice. I got to lift up my voice because I want Jesus to hear me because he's passing by and I'm not going to let this leprosy cause me to be defiant or cause me to be quiet. I'm going to lift up my voice and when I say to that, we come to the house of God. I can't get no help up in here. We come to the house of God and you ain't got no leprosy and you let the devil make you be quiet. But when you come to the house of the Lord, you got to know that you got some kind of deformity. And when you know you got some kind of deformity, you don't come in there and be quiet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, you don't come to the house no, yeah. and be quiet. That's it. Yeah. Like how you gonna come up in the house of God yeah, yeah, and yeah. be quiet yeah. like you yeah. ain't got nothing wrong? Come on, yeah. come on. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't saying that back to me. You got something wrong with you too. And so when you come in the house of God, you got to be like these lepers, man. I ain't gonna let the devil come make on. me be quiet. Yeah. I'm a holler if the preacher yeah. saying something. Yeah. I'm a holler if they sing it and say Some of y'all would get mad. Mm -hmm. I got to preach it for you. Y'all would get mad yeah. when you hear somebody else hollering. Yeah. 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 The first thing you're going to do is yeah. you're going to try to figure out why they're hollering. Yeah. 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 Oh, I feel Jesus right there. I feel Jesus right there, Joseph. When somebody come in here and they hear something that's helping them and they begin to holler, yeah. the first thing you do is you try to figure out why they're hollering. Yeah. And then you go to talking in the spirit. You might not open up your mouth and say it, but in the spirit when you talking yeah. and talking about yeah. the person, y'all yeah. ain't saying nothing in here. Yeah. 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 Watch me here now. Nobody's in from that. I got to tell the truth because I don't know no other way to do it. I, I got to tell the truth because I don't know no other way how to do it. Watch yeah. this here. When, when Miss Collar, we good, we good. When Miss Collar go to Holland, mm -hmm. Collar in the choir, I got the name right here. <laughs> she go to hollering sometime. She blesses me in her yell. Yeah, yeah. I ain't saying nothing. Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes y'all quiet and she'll be like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. And y'all will look at her like, well, you know, I wonder what she going through. See, yeah. y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah. I wonder what she going through. Quit trying to wonder what she going through. Yeah. She giving God the glory. Come on out of here. Yeah. Something might be wrong in her life, but she yeah. saying, God, I thank you. Ain't nobody talking. Yeah. Sometimes when you give God the glory, people trying to figure you out. But quit trying to figure people out. This morning, thank you, God. Watch this here. Watch this here. Watch this here. These leopards had enough sense in verse 13. Look at what they say. Master. The leopards called Jesus Master, which gave Jesus honor. And if you want the blessing from Christ, you must honor him. Lord have mercy. Come on. If you want the blessing from Jesus, what's it? They call him master. That meant they honor him. Come on out of here. Some of y'all want him as savior, but you don't want him as Lord. That's it. That's it. Come on. You want him as savior. Yeah, he's my savior. But when he becomes your Lord, he's Lord over your life. He's Lord over the way you talk. He's Lord over the way you walk. You ain't saying nothing up in here. You want him as savior, but you don't want him as Lord. But they say, master. master, come on with it. And look what they say, have mercy on have us. Have mercy, have mercy. They wanted mercy. What's mercy. this? The lepers wisely sought healing. I mean, they wanted divine mercy. They wanted divine mercy. Yeah. They did not plead merits or rights. Yeah. Mm. The proper way to seek help from God is always to come through the door. That's it, come on with it. Through the door of mercy.
mercy. mercy. Mm, God have mercy. Through the door of mercy. Because merits or rights will not get you much. Yeah. Especially it, it is true in the regards to soul salvation. Because mm. a lot of you think, and some of you who are watching me, you try to give God merits and rights. Yeah. I do the right thing. Lord, I live, you know, halfway. I do this good deed. I do that good deed. And God is saying, that ain't got nothing to do with the salvation. Come on, talk back to me. The Bible says in Titus chapter 3 and verse 5, he says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. That's it, that's it. Anybody in here glad for mercy? Yeah. Come on, anybody in here glad for mercy? Anybody in here glad for mercy? Anybody can thank God for mercy at this hour? Thank you for your mercy, God, because it wasn't because I was good. It wasn't because I did a good deed, but it was because of your mercy that you saved me. Thank you for your mercy. to do with all you did it right and I gave somebody 50 cent on yesterday and ain't got nothing to do with that it all got to do with the mercies of God and I thank him for his mercy because if it weren't for his mercy I might not be saved today mercy now watch this in verse 14 watch this Somebody say he in the text. In the text. I, like in the text. I like to say that now. My grandbaby gets up in the morning with that now, Nathan. Melanie will say to me, hear me listen to somebody preaching, and she said, Daddy, he in the text. He's in the text. <laughs> I like being in the text. Because when you get outside of the text, you're talking about yourself. You put yourself in there. But stay with the word of God. Stay in the text and let people hear for themselves. Watch in verse 14. Watch what he said. He says, go show yourself unto the priest. Showing himself to the priest would give a great witness to the priest of the marvelous work of Jesus Christ in healing the lepers. So when the lepers told the priest, Mm -hmm. The priest would examine the lepers rigorously because they did not like Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The priest didn't like Christ. Yeah. So they examined them rigorously, meaning they're going through it over and over and over again because they didn't want to believe that he was the healer. That's it, that's it. But the more they examined the lepers, the more they would have to admit that Christ did a marvelous job of healing and must be the and he said he must be the son of God as he claimed to be. That's it. So so the more they examined these lepers. That's it. The more they had to come to grips with themselves that he is the son of God. Can I talk to you right here? Yes, the more the world examine us, yes, the more the world look at our lives, yes, the more the world should say they must be know who he is. Yes, come on, talk back to me. That's why you can't be living any kind of way and you can't be talking any kind of way because somebody, come on, talk back to me, somebody's salvation it's dependent on the way you act and the way you live. You got to live right. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. The more they examine him, the more they understood that this must be the Son of God. Yeah. Yeah. So when you walk in, you better hear me somebody examining your life. Because you go to church and you lift up holy hands. And you talking about thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. And somebody's examining your life. Yeah. Why don't you start living right? Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. Yeah. Let somebody see your light. Let your light so shine that yeah. men might see your good work and glorify the Father. Let somebody see your good work yeah. and understand yeah. that you must be no somebody that I don't know. That's it. Yeah. That's why you can see. When I 
And I thank God for my life. I thank God for what I've been through. Yes, sir, I do. Because when brothers see me, they say, man, I'm a lion crow, and that's what they call me. And let me tell you something. If you, if you go to Great Love Baptist Church, and somebody come around you while we talking, and they say, crow, don't, don't go to spirit. I'm talking about his name is Pastor Grant. Shut your mouth. All right, all right. I said, check your mouth. Yeah. That's how they know me. Yeah. That, that, that was my name. Yeah. But I got a new name now. Ain't nobody talking. Yeah. You know I got a new name. Until they recognize that I got a new name, they'll continue to call me Crow. But the yeah. same one who called me Crow years ago, now they call me Pastor Grant. You know why? Because they saw what I walked in. I don't hear nobody. They say, you walking in that thing, Crow. Watch this in now. As they went, they were cleansed. All right, all right. They had to do something. Yes, sir. Lord have mercy. They had to do something. Watch this. They were healed as they went. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 stay with me. Come on. I'm going to say, stay with me. He says, as they went, they were cleansed. All right, all right. So, 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 so as they went, they were cleansed. You know what they had to do? They had to start obeying before they were healed. That's it. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. You think you're going to get holy? You think you're going to get whole just by somebody telling you that? You got to obey the word of God before you get whole. Because he told them, as they went, they were cleansed. Uh -huh. yeah. And they had to exercise faith for their healing. Yeah. Anybody in there know you got to exercise faith for your healing? Oh, yeah. right. You got to believe God for your healing. Yeah. You can't sit there and believe fables. If something wrong with you, they come out of the hospital, they talk about, oh, it's me. You got to wake up and say, no, baby, God got me. Yeah. I, I, I know God is a healer, and if God called me home, I'm going home to be with him. But at this point, I don't need you coming by here when this wall is me. And sometimes you got to learn that. Yeah. Amen. You showed right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sometimes you got to learn that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, watch me. Watch me. And I, 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 I do some truthful preaching. Yeah. I, you know, Sister Carter. Back in the early days, Sister Carter and I, we would go places. Y'all know we, we. Yeah. Um, she going to say something. But if you pay attention, yeah, yeah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Come on, man. If you pay attention, it's going to be something in her sentence that really makes some sense. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. She likes to play a lot, but it's going to be something in there that really makes some sense. Yeah. You know, Reverend? Good. Reverend? Now, yes, ma'am. The people already said, I already know that, Lou. They don't go by there with all of that. Yeah, yeah. We going in there and pray, and we gonna sit for a minute, and we going home because then people need to be healed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it didn't sit right with me. Yeah, all right. I said to myself, I ain't said that. I ain't going with all that. You crazy? <laughs> I'm going in there because I'm used to being eyes and grand. I'm gonna sit in there and talk for an hour. But I mean, you know, sometimes you can say that kind of stuff, and then God will show you yourself. I went by before Sister Mackey, Deacon Mackey's sister left here. He told me she was in the hospital. I went up there to see her and see. After one hour, he said, Reverend, I said, yes, ma'am. You need to go home. Because I'm sick. I don't need you up here telling me all these stories. I'm sick. And so what happened when the woman told me that everything came back me what Sister Carter said to me. And that's why I say sometimes, watch this, say, somebody could tell you something and you don't believe it, but God will show you who you really are. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And God showed me that, but I said, man, boy, that old lady sure was right. Amen. And so from that point, uh -huh. I tried to. Yeah. 
If I don't go with Davis, I try to. I try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Davis know how to do it. And, and let me share this with you before I get back to my tank. When people, now he's been doing this thing for a while. He's been going without me. I ain't no way in sight. But he would call me and allow me and allow me to know what's going on with people in the hospital. He went by their house and all this stuff. So it would be crazy for me, Darrell, when I do go with him to try to tell him what to do. Well, that's right. Even though I'm the pastor, it would be crazy for me to go by the hospital and tell Davis what to do. Now sometimes Davis do some things and I be trembling. I, I'm gonna tell the story. I remember we went to the hospital to see somebody. When you get on the elevator, Davis, and that's a good thing. You better hear me. Davis would say, "David, people on the elevator, man, do you know Jesus? This is my pastor right here. Man, do you don't know Jesus? We just want to do one little thing. We want to lead you through the sinner's prayer. You y'all ain't saying nothing. See that stuff? I said, boy, this this boy is bold as ice. Boy, he he didn't care. He when he met somebody, he gonna ask you if you know Jesus. And guess what? You might think that's crazy." can learn if you pay attention. Watch this. But they went. Watch this what happened. In times of stress, it often tests our faith. But obeying him will strengthen our faith in the Lord. See, it's times of testing. It's, it's a testing time for the lepers. Watch this. You got to go. I'm giving you a command now. I'm telling you to go and show yourself to the priest. I'm not just going to tell you, you go and you be made whole. I'm telling you to do something. And sometimes in the doing something, we don't want to do nothing because we have become a part of people that depend on man and women of God to speak into your life. And that's all going to happen. But there are times when God's going to tell you, you got to do something for yourself. Watch what happened. So when he saw that he was healed, he glorified God, giving him thanks. Watch this. As soon as this leper saw he was healed, as soon as he praised God. But watch this, church. We want God to act quickly when we request his help. Anybody there with me? You sick in the hospital, you want God to move so quickly. God, I call on you. God, I die. God, God. And we want God to move quickly. But we too often, what's this? We are, we are, what's it? Very slow to praise him. Yeah, yeah. Praise him for his help. When God has done something for you, I don't care if you're an H-E-B. If you know God did something in your life, you ought to give God glory right there where you're at. I don't care if you're at Walmart. Ain't nobody talking back to me. If you know God that stepped into your spirit at Walmart, if he gave you a word, you ought to be able to open up your mouth and open it up and say, thank you, Jesus. And the problem with us is we get in places and we get silent, but this leopard said, I'm going to give God the glory. Yeah. And anytime you are sick, yeah. me, and God heal your body, you better lift up your voice and tell God thank you. I'm preaching to somebody right now. Somebody right now who's listening to me. And you on your bed of affliction. But the Holy Ghost is saying, get up. And if you can't get up, lift up your hands. If you can't lift your hands, open up your mouth. As loud as you can. As loud as you can. You might can't say nothing but thank you. But don't let the devil stop you from getting out the name Jesus. Because there's power. Jesus. Anybody know that there's power in the name of Jesus? There's healing power in the name of Jesus. Don't let the devil stop you from getting that name out. Get it out. Do whatever you have to do. Get Jesus out of your mouth. Of his praises, I'm healed. Leopard was not a 
secret disciple. My God! He was not ashamed, Nathan, to honor God in the public. Uh -huh. Go to him, mercy. I said he was not ashamed to honor God in the public. Y'all ain't saying nothing. When you're walking right and when you're talking right, you can honor God wherever you're at. You can lift him up because his name is great. You can say hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Verse 16, in his thankfulness, which was part of his praise, the healed leopard prostrated himself before Christ. The healing miracle not only made the man thankful, but it made him humble. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord. I said it made him humble. And one cannot praise God and be proud. We praise God best when we are prostrate at his feet. I said the man was humble. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I said the man was humble. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't them high solicitic Christians who would stand up and say, yeah, God healed me. And I know he's a healer. And I know he was going to do that. Now the man humbled himself. And let me tell you where humbleness come from. Humbleness came when he fell prostrate before God. Here. I want to teach you right here, great and Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How are I going to teach and move? Amen. I pass a Baptist church, but I'm a good God here. Oh, shit. Listen, Joseph, when somebody feels the power of God in the service of God, Nathan, when they feel the power of God, they know they've been living wrong. They know they got some leprosy in their life. And they feel the power of God and the power of God moved them to get out of their seats, Sister Williams. They said, I can't sit here any longer. And they come to the altar. You know what I'm saying, greater love? And they fall prostrate. Y'all may say nothing. When they fall prostrate before God, and the people fall down on their face before God. Would you watch this? Oh, no. Watch this right in the text. In the text, watch this. He said, He said unto him, He told the lepers, He says, Arise and go thy way. God have mercy. I want you to see this in your Bible. Your, thy faith has made thee whole. You better underline that. He says, Thy faith has made thee whole. In addition, this is an additional blessing. It was given to the leopard. In 
was and it is a tribe as thy fate made thee whole. Ah, help me, Lord Jesus. The spiritual healing was more important and greater than the blessing, than the physical healing. Y'all ain't saying because the blessing that he gave him, he gave him salvation. Can I get a witness here? Salvation was more important. It was more important to the Samaritan dude. But I want you to get this in the story. As I close my book, I want you to get this. It was a Samaritan and Jesus. Nine of the leopard stables. Nine of them. Oh, Lord. Lord Jesus. But this poor Samaritan didn't have what they had. But who came back and gave the Lord praise? It was the man that didn't have what they had. The Samaritan, I said he didn't have what the Jews had. But the Samaritan was the one who came back and said, thank you Jesus. What are you trying to say, Pastor Grant? If you are one of those in the house of God that everybody look down on, and when God do something in your life, I come by to tell you, don't be afraid to give God glory. You might be the only one that would come back and say, thank you, Jesus. I thank you because I was a leper. I thank you because I couldn't go around my family. But now, not only did you heal my infirmities, but you gave me salvation. And I'm so grateful that you gave me salvation. Can I get a witness in here? Anybody in here glad that the Lord saved you? Anybody in here glad that you got salvation? Anybody in here glad even though Corona is there? Anybody in here glad? still come in here and lift up holy hands. Can I tell you that you are healed in the name of Jesus? Anybody here with me glad to be in the house of the Lord? Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? Can you lift up those hands and tell the Lord thank you? Let's have a thank you party. Tell the Lord thank you. If you're watching me on the broadcast, you are in. Lift up your hands and tell the Lord thank you. You're going to be dead and in your grave but you are here. So you want to tell the Lord tell the Lord thank you. I feel like dancing. I feel like dancing. Because as I read the story and he gave him salvation. I think about in the Bible where he said he was going to die but he said on the third day morning I'm coming up out of the grave and when I come up out of this grave I'm coming out with all power that's going to be in my hand don't you know that he died anybody there know that he died I said anybody there know that he died I said he died but he didn't stay in the grave I said he died but he didn't stay in the grave on the third day morning he got up with all power in his hand black power white power blue power purple power he got power and the power that he got up with he transformed it to my life I'm glad
to get something for my wife that she told me to get. And I heard the Lord say, you got a daughter in South Carolina. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here that you never do nothing for. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. I started to weep in my car. I said, God, you're so right. I do for brother and I do for Kira, but I never do for my daughter in South Carolina and Sister Carter. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. I said, girl, send me your cash app. She sent me her cash app, Daryl, and I cash app her, and she called me back. She said, Daddy, oh, God, Daddy, and I said, my, my, it's the little things that you do uh, that people will be glad for. But can I tell you something? I, I teach you something. If you plant seeds, seeds will grow. Nathan, when I got home, uh, y'all ain't saying nothing, Sister Carter. When I got home, uh, I looked at my cash app. Uh, I feel Jesus right there. Uh, I looked at my cash app. Uh, and I said, my God, conscious, uh, somebody send me some money. Uh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, I said, y'all ain't Read Proverbs 11 and 25. I know I got off my message, but read Proverbs 11 and 25. It'll tell you how you give and how fat God will make you. And when I looked at my cash app, I said, my God, you turn that thing around just that quick. And I said to God, I said, God, I got it now. Who else can I bless? I said, who else can I bless? Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. I said, who else can I bless? And I thought about a family. I thought about a family that was in need. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You better practice this stuff in the last days. I thought about a family that was in need. Went inside ACB and I just started gathering up some stuff. I said, God have mercy. I don't know what's happening to me now, but I know you're doing something. I started gathering up some stuff. And when I called the brother on the phone, y'all ain't saying nothing. The brother got eight children and he's struggling, trying to find a job, but he's trying to do what's right. I said, boy, I'm going to bless you today. And when he came by, he said, oh, my God, oh, my God, thank you, Pastor Grant. I said, be blessed, boy, just be blessed. Can I tell you something? The more you give, the more God will give. I don't know why I'm preaching this right now. Some of you, I might have, you might have stopped giving, but God is saying, get back on your bicycle because you can't beat God giving no matter how hard you try. Ask them lepers. You can't be God giving no matter how hard you try. Ask them lepers. They had leprosy, but now they are healed in the name of Jesus. And so what they did, they said, I'm going to give you praise. I'm going to give you glory. And in this house today, if God has been good to you, I said, in this house today, if God has been good to you, in this house today, if God has been good to you, in this house today, if God has been good to you, I'm getting ready to count the tree, and if God has been good to you, you ought to give him praise, you ought to give him praise, you ought to give him praise, you ought to give him praise. Watch this, watch this for you, go to the beach. Y'all ain't saying that. And so the cab thing got a little slower. And Melissa, God gave you the idea to go to your truck in your car. Start selling food. If I'm alive, ain't God made a way out of no way. And the Lord could. He made a way. He made a way out of no way. Because you did. man. 
me. While I'm there, I said, you looking at a blessed man. If y'all would only pay attention. You remember, I remember when, when Minister Davis was, was teaching them young people how to get them jugs and put quarters and nickels and dimes in there. How many of you remember that back at Greater Love? He, he, he was teaching them, y'all, y'all put some nickels in there. Y'all put some dimes in there. And while you get, when you get 19 years old, you ain't gonna know what you got up in there. Can I get a witness here? My God. And listen here. I, I was home the other day. God, that worse. I feel, I just feel like testifying. I was in the closet. And Mel came in there. And she said, Papa, I got hundreds of dollars. I said, you, what? She said, I got hundreds of dollars. I said, what are you talking about, ma'am? My big Papa, he gave me hundreds. That was Deacon Cook. Help me. Happy, that's what she called him. Happy, he said, put them, put them things in that jar. And I said, hey, man, you, said, look at the jar, Papa. Yeah. There's some hundreds in there. Whole bunch of quarters and nickels and dimes. Now, I ain't gonna tell this business. All I'm gonna tell you, he's a blessed man of God. And that's all I'm gonna tell you, he's a blessed man of God. Y'all look at him like he's crazy, but he's a blessed man of God. You know why he's a blessed man of God? Because he got a heart to give. And if anybody listening to me, you know what I'm talking about. That man got a heart to give. You done got peacocks, plates, and everything. He got a heart to the people of God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And as soon as he take care of the people of God, God takes care of him. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I ain't got all of my messes right there. But God wanted me to tell you, greater love, I'm getting ready to count the tree. And let's give God some glory in this place. One for the Father, two for the Son, three for the Holy Ghost. Let's give him praise in the house of God. Thank you, baby. 
pretty much during the day. Mm -hmm. So the other day, I mean, I was knocked out. Sheldon called me. And he said, the Whitney called you? I said, he said, no. I mean, I said, no. He said, your mama failed. I said, what? She failed. So, and she always wearing them little bit here. She got, got some on the day, so they allowed me to get chunked too. So when I called her, she said, I was getting the stuff out of my car. And the garage door was coming down. And I stepped back and I fell. She fell back. And for y'all know, she goes more than the average guy. Yeah. Amen. She never sit down. Never sit down. Her bones are stronger than mine. And for y'all, the devil, devil, he put thoughts to your head. You know, she got old people when they get a certain age, they got brittle bones. Yeah, yeah. They start bruising up and those commercials was popping up at the same time. Well, well, should I, I, I fail or whatever? And I said, oh, I got to get on one of those. But God is telling me, no. Yeah, yeah. Your mama's doing these things for a reason. Yeah. Go. You know, 86 years old. Yeah. Still, got yeah. Yeah. still got her eyes. Still got her strong bones. Yeah. Yeah. Still, 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 still
still can drive. Yeah. But I thank God to this day it could have been so worse. Yeah. If you fall like that, that leads to death being her age. Yeah. So I say, Mama, sit down somewhere. Sit down. So I told her she I fell two months ago and I'm still aching. Yeah. So when we got up, I had to get up and go get a stress test. I said, Mama, how you feeling? She said, good, I'm fine. Yeah. Man. Thank God. That's, God. That's a blessing. Yeah. That's a blessing is to have your mama to do all those things. She's still be in the right mind. And she can still be in the driving. And uh, say other things that come out of her mouth. But I thank God for my mama. Thank you. Ooh, I love you, girl. Thank you. I might not tell you. And I thank God to be able, fifty baby, for you to tell me those things. Because a lot of people around their mother here this year. But I thank God for my mother. Y'all just don't know I thank God for my mother. I know baby to fill our shoes, I live that long. But I thank God for my mother. Yes, Lord. I threw those shoes away, shoes away, y'all. Just what y'all don't know. Wow. I them. Thank you, Thank for listening. At this time, there's someone here been looking in today. If you're not saved, we want to give you an invitation to be saved today. If you believe Thank in your you heart God. You're worthy, God. what you're going to yes, say with your mouth, you, repeat after me this in a prayer. You Praise will be saved today. Yeah. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I'm, a I'm a sinner. I'm coming now, coming now. Asking, you asking you to forgive me, forgive me of, my of my sins. I believe, I believe in, my heart in my heart that Jesus, that Jesus is your son. Your son. He, died he died on the cross, on the cross for, my sins. for my sins. He was buried. He, was buried. he, rose, he rose on the third day. On the third day. He, now, he now in heaven, in heaven sitting, at your right side, sitting at your right side, interceding, interceding on, my behalf. on my behalf. Jesus, Jesus I'm, inviting you I'm inviting you to come live in my heart, in my heart. to be my personal. My Lord, and Savior. Lord and Savior, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Take, complete take complete control, control over, my life. over my life. Help me, Help me to, faithfully to faithfully follow Jesus, follow Jesus. and do the, will and do the will of the living God, the living God. Every, day every day of my life. I'm saved. I'm saved. I've been washed, I've been washed in, the in the blood of Jesus. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father thank, you thank you for loving me enough, loving me enough to, save my life. to save my life. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name we, pray. we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
doing so simple we think this time, Pastor Brian. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Worthy God. Thank you. Listen, the uh, the uh, I'm gonna call it a movie. The movie that Brother Williams uh, shot, and some of you, uh, you were singing. Uh, that that's gonna be aired. Monday or Tuesday, he told me. Monday or Tuesday. And that's going to be it. That's going to be on. And, uh, I can't wait to see his work that he has done. Because uh, he's a marvelous, I guess, film director, shooter, or whatever. He has to be good because his stuff is being looked at. And, uh, and we thank the Lord for Brother Howard Williams because he, he didn't have to do that. Amen. He, he did that out of the goodness of his heart. He Thank thought of that and he did that. Yes. He, did, he, he didn't have to do that. And so we got, you know, I thank the Lord for him. I really do. He is using his gift. And I'm so happy to see Brother John in the back. Y'all say amen. I, I miss him so. I really did. I had to ask Pam. He got to work. He got to work. But I, I, I want you to know, man, I really miss you. And I miss you being on that camera back there. And uh, listen. Not only is Brother Williams a good dude, his wife was so kind. Mm -hmm. So Scott, yeah. before y'all go, his wife was so kind, thank you, uh, to make some cookies for everybody. Mm -hmm. And, and y'all know her cookies, is, they sugar free. Okay. So if you're a diabetic, you ain't got to worry about it. She made some cookies for everybody here. Y'all come on, say amen. Everybody here is going to get some cookies. Amen. And we thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for that. Oh, Sister yes. Faye had a uh, wonderful uh, giveaway on Tuesday. Y'all thank, thank God for Sister Faye because she started a new ministry here. That's going to be happening every third every third Wednesday. Am I right, Faye? It's Wednesday? Every third Wednesday at 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock they're going to be giving away Food. I'm telling they're giving away food for real, for real, for real. And uh, I am so grateful to God for her launching that ministry because she's been working on it for a long, long time. Yeah, now, we won't have our our little Christmas thing that we have on the 25th that morning. We're not going to have that this year. So, uh, open before you open up your gift, be sure to give God glory because he didn't have to let you be there to open up those gifts. So, be sure to give God glory before you open up your gift. I want to say to everyone, I, my musicians, thank you, man. We coming, we coming, we coming, we coming. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm saying we coming. I thank God for all of you and your faithfulness. See, faithfulness will pay off. Yes, Lord. I'm telling you, that's what I'm living. It'll pay off after a while. Your faithfulness, thank y'all for being there with me, man, and going through what you're going through and continuing to come and continuing to pour out. I'm coming to tell you that God see your heart. So, thank you, God. And God will bless you, man. For that great love, I thank y'all. I want all of y'all to be listening to me in your ear. Have a Merry Christmas. But be safe. Listen, we're going to start a new thing in here now. Before we leave, we're going to start a new thing. And if you get mad, you ain't got to come. The thing is getting very crazy. It's, the numbers is going up. We just wait to see. But this is what I'm going to start. When we are in here, I need the ushers to pay close attention to me. Y'all going to come up front, and you guys will be the one that will direct the people to go outside. Amen. Listen, they're going to come to you seat by seat. Seat by seat. They're going to come say, it's your time to go. You can go. Because we, listen, the thing is getting high, and we got to maintain our safety. And so we got to go to the next level. And so in the next level, they're going to come and they're going to let you know where you can go outside. And when y'all get outside, don't pull your mask off. Keep your mask on until you get inside your car. And you ought to get in your car and get on the way from it because this thing ain't nothing to play with. Get in your car. Get in your car. I'm telling you, they're going to come by the
a seat and say, it's your time. Now, if you get disturbed and get crazy, don't come back. That's right. I, I meant that. Because I, I got people live in the palm of my hand. And I got to be serious about this. And you hear what I'm saying? As the pastor, I got people lives in the palm of my hand. And so if the Lord give it to me, I got to give it to you. They're going to come by your seat. Now, if they come by your seat and you say it, and you sit there with your mean say, I'm talking about, I ain't, ain't going, I ain't going. And if they come and tell me that, I'm going to politely come to you and say, you don't need to come back. Amen. Because there's rules and regulation everywhere. If you go to H-E-B and they got the six foot sign, you ain't going to, you ain't going up there to get up on nobody. You're going to get right on that little dot that they tell you to get on. Yes, you are. You're going to do that. You see, we'll pay attention to all of that. But when it comes to the house of Lord, we want to get angry and mad. And I know the Lord. Well, that's fine. I'm not saying you don't know him. I'm saying protect the other people in yourself. So this is the new, the new, the new thing. That's going to be the new norm. The new norm is when you sit there, they're going to say, okay, it's your time to go. You're going to get up and you're going to go outside. Now, if you choose to hang out out there and you choose to take your mask off, that's on you. I, I'm telling you as your pastor, don't do it. But if you're going to be hard-headed and you say, I don't care what he say, it's fine with me. You ain't got to care what I'm going to say. It's fine with me. But I ain't taking mine off till I get in my car. When I get out of here, when I get, <laughs> when I get out of here, y'all, y'all might notice I ain't trying to talk. I'm trying to get in that little car. I'm going back right, home. Right. I, I am. I'm, I'm going to do this thing and tell. And if y'all don't listen, the last thing I'm going to say, this is on you. You got to think about this. And I ain't going to try to force nobody. Because African Americans, we... We kind of fumble about that little shot they're going to give you. But but that's your decision that you're going to make. I'm not telling nobody ye or nay. That'll be your decision, and that's up to you and your God. But for me, I'm sitting in the chair. Tell me, Lord Jesus. I'm the same for me. I'm, and they can say, you know, you got all kind of theories out here. You're going to hear it everywhere on YouTube, Facebook, you know, if you take it, you're going to get shrinking. Well, ain't nobody shrunk yet. Yeah, <laughs> ain't nobody lost their mind yet. So, so you ain't got to do it. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, because I'm in contact with a lot of nurses and high polluting people in high places that I'm getting my information from. Because when you, when you know people, see, it ain't what, what you know, it's who you know. When you know people in high places, you can talk to them and they'll tell you the truth. I'm listening to, I'm listening at the voices that I work with people in Crockett High School is in some high polluting places. And I thank God I remain friends with them because they're telling me the truth. And so you can do what you want to do. Come on, Joseph, take us out of here. Y'all have a Merry Christmas and a Happy, Happy New Year. me. Father, we come now, we come in the name of Jesus, and Lord, we thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for allowing us to come back into your house just one more time. Thank you for protecting us, God, because you are our protector. I pray for everyone under the weak sound of my voice to have a very merry Christmas and a show of happy new year. I pray now, God, for the sick and the shut in. I pray that you would heal what needs to be healed. Yes, because we know you as a healer. Right, Thank you for keeping us and our families. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus. And the church did say. Uh -huh.